So I looked up a few different timers. I looked on Amazon and there's no shortage of timers that are out there that are uh, honestly appear sketchy. And so I happened to be in the local Walmart and I saw these, the Holiday Time brand, Indoor Digital Timer. And it's for one outlet, indoor use only, and it, it only has one program, cycles on and off as you select it over a 24 hour period. And then I saw that it was actually UL listed. So it's a single polarized outlet. It has some interesting electrical ratings, 15 amp resistive load, a 15 amp general use load, and then tungsten, so that's more of an inrush, and then a 500 watt electric ballast, which has even more of an inrush. There's actually some horsepower ratings for motor loads and a ballast load rating. This indicated to me that it had some sort of relay in it and it's not switching via a triac, which interested me. So I picked it up, it was like nine bucks. I already have one and I want to use another one for something else that I might actually hack this thing apart with. So I figured why not open it right here. So it has just two prong terminal on one side and then on the on the back and then on the side it has the switched terminal. It also has a switch on it that says timer control and then you flip the switch and it goes to timer or always on. So timer control, always on. There's not a lot in the manual, but it does say something interesting because the first thing I thought when I got this was that, oh, they, there's some CR2025 battery in here or some lithium battery that's gonna last a year or two and then die and then I won't be able to use this thing anymore or I be, won't be able to use it and I'll lose the battery backup functionality on it. And I was wrong. In the instructions, it says, here we go, <laughs> the first step. Preparing the timer for use. Before initial use, plug timer in for at least 30 minutes to charge the internal battery. As, a, as after the screen displays, unit is ready for programming. So it's there's enough juice in the battery for it to be to remain powered. The LCD display might turn off after a long period of time without use. Plug timer into an outlet once every three months to keep the battery charged. That's pretty cool. That aspect of it I really like for nine bucks. And then I plugged it in because I was kind of curious how much power it would use when it was charging. And so here I will get the kilowatt. This is going to be a bit of a... <laughs> I'm going to get the kilowatt in there. 124 volts, 124.1 volts, a little high right now, but so let's go to wattage. I'm gonna plug this thing in. It hasn't been plugged in before. I just took it out of the obviously just took it out of the box. So plug it in. And without any load on it at all, it's saying 0 0.8 watts. And I left this plugged in for quite a while because I was hoping that this would drop to a much lower quiescent draw once this thing was fu fully charged, but it didn't. It stayed at 0 0.8 watts, which is okay. It's better than in the case of a air purifier that's drawing about 24 to 26 watts. You're drawing 0 0.8 watts instead. It's okay. The payoff for this thing to actually be worth what I paid for it in the cost of electricity, it's going to take a little while. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping once you open this thing up, kind of get an idea of what's going on that's making it need to draw that amount of power. So the other thing before I take it apart that I found interesting is that if you flip the switch here to between timer control and always on, you'll hear it's really quiet. You hear the relay click. I've turned it on. Now I'm going to turn it off. You can sort of hear what it sounds like it sounds like it's a latching relay. And you can see that it most likely is a latching relay because it draws a little bit more power and then goes right back to its steady state draw. And that I find interesting, even if we go to VA, which is drawing a lot, because the power factor is not very good, 0.24. Yeah, relay is on, it's still 0.24. So 3.5 VA, 3.7, 3.5 it doesn't change. It leads me to believe that the coil is not being continuously energized or it's really being pulsed with modulated like crazy to try to minimize how much current the coil is drawing. Let's unplug it out of here for now. 
So the next thing we're going to do is just open this thing up. And it looks like it's just four Phillips head screws. So let's get the appropriate size screwdriver. We need to call in the fancy screwdrivers. I call them fancy because they're the, the Weeha. I think that's how you say it. German screwdrivers. They're actually a pretty nice set. So I'll take out the screws here. Interesting, nonetheless. Okay, so there's some line voltage going on in here, so we're gonna watch out. Watch out. Looks like it's a capacitive dropper circuit to get logic level for the front display. And I do see the battery. I do see it, it's the green little guy right there. And then there is three wires going to this display. It's all that's needed power and then I think a control line for switching this relay on and off. I'm thinking the board is just held in by the... Nope, because they they pushed them away from each other? No, nope. is there screws holding it down? This is just slid in. I can see it. Oh, this... Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. So it's like a little plastic spacer that I think keeps... Maybe, maybe perhaps it just keeps this printed circuit board away from live. I don't know. I'm not really sure why that's there. But maybe to keep the low voltage stuff. I mean, this is all low voltage, but I wouldn't say that it's I, it's not isolated. Definitely not isolated. So this is all reference back to mains because of that capacitive dropper. There it goes. It's actually kind of neatly put in there. Oh, look at that. Hello. There is a tiny little battery here. And my biggest interest was, what if I clip that battery off? Because I don't really care about the battery, <laughs> about it charging. I have a feeling this is a nickel, it is nickel metal hydride, and I have a feeling that it's just being constantly trickle charged while it's on all the time. And there's not really any active circuitry to stop it from charging. So this relay has a 24 volt DC coil. Very interesting. It's a Shory relay. I'm, I guess I'd have to look up this part number, S724A, to see if it is a latching relay. Uh, the board work here is not stellar. There's definitely notches in it to maintain the proper creepage distances around the board. And that's nice. It's nice to see that that was done. It looks like power, this being line, comes in. And it's a single-sided board, so pops off to this capacitor, which is the capacitive dropper. So this drops the AC voltage. It's not isolating. It's just dropping the voltage. So you can touch something here to earth ground and be getting a line voltage reference which is why these are not particularly safe in situations where you can touch low voltage. And so what I'm thinking they did, whoop, I'm thinking they did with this is that all this plastic and the buttons and everything all have to be suitably rated for what's called direct support of live parts. Power goes to that and then it looks like it goes to this. There's a resistor across this. I think that's, that's to discharge this. So you don't get a, a zap off the pins. And then it goes to this resistor. And then this dro is dropped to very low voltage to a full bridge rectifier. And you can see they cut notches in here to maintain clearance or creepage distances between <laughs> that. Yeah, this is why I'm glad these things are go through third party test certifications. You could see where this could have easily been not notched out. You would have had this low voltage trace running around very close to this is where you're plugging in your your switch device it comes around here to a diode bridge full bridge rectifier and then it comes off here to some looks like a zener oh zd1 zener diode probably to clamp some spikes and then we got some filtering caps what we've got here a 50 volt 100 micro microfarad right after the bridge rectifier then there's another 25 volt maybe you could step down again yikes 
but there's two twenty. There's two of these guys in. There's two more. One capacitor right off the bridge rectifier, and then there's another one. Twenty. So it's a it's fifty volt, and then it's got a resistor, and then it drops again. To, then it drops to two twenty five volt. No, a twenty five volt and a ten volt. You can see where this is just kind of sloppy. This is like bodged down. This part actually, I don't think it's supposed to even be in there. I don't know what IPC rating this is for the board layout, but these, all these surface mount parts are like, I mean, they're within their boxes, but that's not saying much. <laughs> that means they're at least on the board <laughs> and electrically connected and passed whatever little in circuit test they did for for this. So this I think drops the voltage down to probably whatever logic level for the for this control circuitry. And we probably could verify that by looking at this little capacitor that is actually got some some glue on it. And it makes sense because that would be that would support not only the logic level, but it would support whatever voltage the battery would output. I was thinking of just clipping it off. And I could solder it back on again if I wanted to. Let's just do that. I'm going to use it, and I just don't care about the battery. So as soon as I cut the battery, it's going to lose power. Just being gentle not to break the... There we go. The battery is disconnected. So what I'm curious about is now we plug it back in. What is the power draw of this thing because this it's it's a neat feature and if I want to if I do want to use it in the future I'll come back and I'll plug this thing I'll wire this thing back up or whatever but let's go ahead and plug this all back in again I'm just going to slide this back in to its chassis and I'm just going to plug this back in I'm not actually going to Is that the right way? It is the right way. Okay. Oh, it snaps in nicely. But it is showing. Oh, look at that. I don't think we're gonna get any, we're not gonna get any bonus points for disconnecting the battery. So it does work. It's just, I'm looking at it off axis and it doesn't have the greatest contrast. But you can see now, I think it says 1201. Yeah. Okay. So on. I'm looking at the camera to see if I can see on time, off. On, off. Yeah, okay. So it does work, but you get no power savings. <laughs> so totally not worth cutting the battery out of it at all. So I'm just gonna whip, whip the soldering iron back out and just solder that little piece back on. Bummer. I thought I would see some energy savings. What to say about this? Oh, it's staying on. Oh, the, the capacitors are just hanging on. <laughs> Get this out. And what have we learned? Don't disconnect the battery. Doesn't save you anything. It's generally good construction. I mean, the plastic is, is the housing is good. That's a good start. All the buttons feel good for, you know, for a few minutes you're going to be using it to set the timer. And the other one that I have works really well. And this feature that like, which I think most timers have that kind of like bypass the timer is a nice function. Capacitor dropper is totally fine. in something that is completely encased in a material that is suitably rated for direct support of life parts, like I said. So I, this looks like it is. Is this ABS plastic. Um, I guess I'll pop this out real quick. Let's just see if that held on there. Okay, let's just look at this real quick. Because I guess that'd be the only last piece that I would want to, would be curious about is, since it is all line voltage referenced, which is voltage stepped down, that I'd like to see a good piece of plastic in between the LCD panel and the and what you're t what you're seeing on the outside, this hopefully is not the LCD panel. It, I don't think it is. I can feel something else moving in there. And if that is the case, then that's pretty good. Oh, yep, they did. They put something over it. Cool. So a thin piece of plastic, but it's better than not having anything. And that's again, all of this is to keep the high voltage stuff inside the enclosure, the, the mains voltage reference stuff inside the enclosure, 
and keep it away from your fingers. And so like you can see in these, I think this is silicone, this is all silicone I believe. There's a lot of material between you and the carbon plungers that are touching the the various pieces on, on here. So you're not, you're very far away from anything that's uh, line voltage referenced. And I want to be really careful with this because if that comes loose, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get back on again. Aside from the fact that it's, it's sloppy PCB work, but you know, this is a $9, this was $8 or whatever it is. All the capacitors and wiring is all rated 105 degrees C. So they could have gotten away with 85 degrees C. Yeah, it's interesting. They could have gotten away with 85 degrees C capacitors. They didn't. They end up using 105 degrees C. Even this little guy, this 105C, 105C. So that's nice, it's, it's, it's actually pretty decent for what it is. Um, the brains are all behind here. I think they're probably, I'm not pulling this off. There's some foam tape holding this down. There's a chip on the board and it is driving the LCD, I'm pretty sure. And then all the, you know, the, the functionality and then uh, gets power from this board and then provides it's one output, which is to turn the relay on or turn the relay off to the relay itself. And that's pretty much it. It's the high voltage stuff that you wanna see done right. And they've soldered these prongs on this side and then they've also soldered them on the, on the opposite side. They're actually looped through the board, as you can see. It's actually a U-shaped part. I don't know why they blob so much solder on the other side but it's like a U-shaped part and actually the solder touching the relay. It's fine. It was surprising to see something with a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery in it. I wish it was a little bit more power efficient, the 0 0.8 watts. Walmart, or whoever ma contract manufactured this for Walmart doesn't really say, yeah, see if you can get this thing down to a little lower quiescent draw. Okay, I'm gonna put it back together after I solder it, but I think I will just do a time lapse so you can uh, see me reassemble everything and hopefully it still works. All right, uh, until next time, take care.